you to, to look at your goals, truly what you want to do in your life, and then look at the people who you spend the most time with in your life and figure out if that lines up. All right. What is happening, everybody? It is Tuesday, March 24th, 2020. And this morning, I decided to give you guys a little added bonus. You get double the fun this morning, double the perspective, double the insight, because I brought my man, Mr. Judd Burden, onto the show this morning. We're going to talk about all kinds of stuff. We're just going to talk about what's going on out there, how people are feeling, what's going on in the world of business, how we're dealing with things. And last but not least, we're going to take your questions. We're going to allow you guys to ask us anything that you want to ask. You are, uh, it's, it is fair game. So by all means, jump on here, drop a comment, tell us what you're thinking, tell us how you're feeling. And, uh, we're going to get started. So first question I have, brother, is uh, what is it like? I know that we've talked about this a little bit, but what is, you know, what is what is it like being on an island in the middle of the Caribbean? I know that there is, you know, there are certainly some bonuses to that situation because, uh, A, you guys do not have a, a case of this crazy virus on the island, but the flip side to that is it's a lot smaller. It's obviously very dependent on tourism. And, you know, there's a lot of things that that make it, you know, more challenging as an island, uh, while at the same time you have the greatest gift and protection that you could possibly have is that everybody there should have their their health, right? If there's no cases and it's it's now isolated, right? Yeah. Uh, well, I think there's 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 a lot that, you know, there are a lot of feelings that are going on right now. And, you know, being, being in this digital era that we're in, of course we have, you know, our situation here, but there's this global situation as well. So I'll talk a little bit about, about what it's like here. So everybody understands what it's kind of like to live on a, you know, an Island that's 13 miles long, two miles wide in the middle of the, in the middle of the ocean with, you know, 15,000 people limited, limited medical, you know, hospital and, and care capability. Um, because let's face it, we're never really prepared for a, for a pandemic like what is taking place right now, um, let alone uh, a hurricane, you know, so a hurricane comes and goes and, and we'll talk a little bit about that because I think it's important to have a little perspective around what it's like to have a winter storm, what it's like to have a hurricane, what it's like to have a tornado that just recently people have lost their homes and lives in Nashville and so on and so forth. But I want to read something out from um, from Troy Palomalu. And it says, there are times I am happy. There are times I am sad, but I always try to separate emotion from the need to reach for something stronger, deeper. And then no matter the emotion, I can reach for a stability that helps me accomplish what is the goal. And so I'd like to just read that out because there are days where, where I am, where I am, uh, I wake up with a little bit of fear uh, because of the unknown. And then as I start to learn about things, as my day continues, it only takes five or 10 minutes to get the wheels going and to start to gain some perspective and understanding of what what the gift that we've been given, which is life and this energy to be able to do what we're doing, like the things that we're doing right this very second. Uh, what is it like to live on the island? Back to the answer. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's as lonely as you want to make it. And so, you know, in the case of our family, we are isolated on this in, in our home. We've got a beautiful home here and we have beautiful views off the deck um, and we have beautiful beaches that we can go to that are uncrowded. And we have the ability <clears throat> to drive around in the car with the family and see different things to keep our mind a little more active. Or in the buggy. 
or in the buggy, in the dune buggy. We do go down in the dune buggy with the kiddos. They love it. But what is it like being down here? It is true paradise. And then on the other side of that, we know that if coronavirus is to impact the island and infect people here, we're going to have a serious issue because there are people that are there are people that are still congregating and playing dominoes in the streets and you know getting together and having you know these these get-togethers that include you know a couple dozen people and on an island of 15,000 people with very limited ventilators like i believe um, and I, i'm not sure if this is exactly accurate but we've got about a dozen ventilators i believe total on this island for 15,000 people. We have limited doctors and nurses and care here and a huge shout out to them because it must be very, very concerning for them kind of waiting for the storm to hit, if you know what I mean. Um, yet there are no confirmed cases on this island yet. Um, three, three tests went out and all came back negative and then three more are on, on the way out right now for, for, t for, um, for testing or for, for results. But, but I guess, I guess to answer your question, Brian, it's, it's it absolutely incredible to be down here uh, during these times and not just during these times, but all the time, it's really, it, it really is true paradise, but it is like living in a very, very small town too, if you know what I mean. And so we're very close with, you know, a lot of people here on the island, we love and care for them dearly. And I'm, we're, we're just very concerned at this very point in time about, about it hitting uh, and us having the issues. There were all the flights and ports were closed on Friday, last Friday, uh, and there were coming in Friday afternoon. Is my connection okay? Yeah, I'm gonna chop it out. Yeah, you, you just got a little bit choppy there, but no, nothing major. So, um, you know, and I, I would say closed on what, Friday. Yeah. When you were talking about that, you know, when you said uh, it is as lonely as you want to make it, I would say that's true in any place that you are in the world, right? You just happen to be on an island that's out in the middle of the ocean, so the perspective that people might have of that would say, "Oh man, you know." Um, I, I wouldn't want to be trapped there. I wouldn't want to be in Hawaii or I wouldn't, you know, because, uh, you know, seems scary to people because it's unknown. But the reality is, you know, I've spent enough time on that island to know that, you know, it is it is not by any means a place that you would not want to be stuck. <laughs> you know, right. and it, and and ultimately knowing that it's not indefinite there is no no place that you're going to be is is an indefinite thing that you can't you know get on a plane here shortly and and go visit somewhere else and so um i think you know i think it's it is a time where we have this is probably going to be the greatest time of self discovery <laughs> that any human race has ever had in our generation right and the reason that I say that, and Judd, Judd and I were talking before we got on here about, you know, just what I really want to do is be able to capture what's going on in the world via video. You know, I want to I want to drive around Pittsburgh and I want to show people and I really want to record it because, you know, my sons, Quincy and Preston, even even Kingston and Paisley, they probably won't remember this well, um, you know, as they grow up to be adults. You know, I. I was old enough when September 11th, you know, happened that I, I remember every detail of that. And, you know, um, you know, being these these major life events like this, you know, I think it's important to record this stuff. And I think that, you know, when you document it and you can go through, you know, a city like Pittsburgh where there is, you know, there's going to be parts of it where there are nobody, there's nobody outside that would typically be packed. Uh, the the opposite perspective of that is that, you know, we're going through a time when a lot of people are sick and a lot of people could be infected. And there might be places where there's a lot of people. And I think that, you know, both of those things are important for people to see. Because we've seen, you know, the, the kids on the beaches of spring break. And, you know, I just posted something the other day 
of, you know, a bunch of boats tied together. And, you know, I'm not, I'm not here to judge anybody. I'm not here to, you know, make anybody angry or, or, you know, call anybody out that's out, out there on those boats for, for any reason other than to say, you know, this is, this is serious stuff, you know, and if you are a person that is not listening to these types of recommendations, then you are costing everybody in the world precious time. You're, you're causing damage to the economy if these things are extended, things like that. And, you know, I think that it, it's a time when that self-discovery is so important for all of us to do to realize why is it that you would need to be out on that boat tied to someone else. That's the question that I would ask those people. I would, uh, I would ask people tied to boats. I would ask the, you know, ask people who are, who are, you know, going over to other people's houses where there's elderly people that are fragile. I would, I would, it's, it's at this point in time, people should just isolate to slow down the momentum of this virus. I mean, that's the reality of it, right? And just realize, you know, I think I think one of the things that that people are really feeling is that there's this this chunk of life that they believe they are going to miss. <laughs> like yeah. there's a chunk of life that people are scared of losing. You know, time is so important in your life and you need you need to you need to have these experience. You fill this the, the time with experiences and learning and and, uh, you know, those are the things that we live with until we die. And let me tell you, this time is not a void. This is not a, a blank part of your life. This is your life. You are alive right now and you have the opportunity to create experiences and memories with your family, with your loved ones and self-development for yourself. Hell, you can come out way ahead as we come out the other side of this from where you were before that in the case that this never did happen. You could actually become more of a loving individual, more self-love, more you know, educated. You come out uh, the other side is more, more of a winner than you were before. And these kind of things are, are emotional things that take place in your life. And with these, you either you either go down the road of learning from them and applying the opportunity of what is ahead, embracing the situation, you know, having faith and ultimately growing, or you go the other way, which is to lay in your bed, do absolutely nothing, be depressed and dark, watch the news and just basically create the blank. But you are in control of that. You're in the driver's seat of creating that. I woke up this morning, literally 48 minutes ago, and I went downstairs and held my children in my arms and told them how much I love them. And I'm going to get on the show with Brian here this morning, and we're going to share some some important things with the world that need to hear this. And then after I'm done this, I'm going to hop on a sales call that I have planned with my team, and I'm going to help them feel powerful and unstoppable. And I'm going to give them that energy because I have the choice to do that or not do that. And then my team is going to feel unstoppable, and they're going to go and spread that to their families. And then they're going to communicate that online to their people. And it's a viral positive sped, uh, spread in, in, in the case, right? So I think that's really important to have perspective. Uh, on, you know, this time period, don't create this whiteout spot for yourself, create this opportunity to actually play this right for yourself, you know? Yeah. And I, I think that's important, man. I think that people are seriously so obsessed over what they're going to miss that they really miss the thing that's right in front of their face. They miss the gift that is right in front of their face to you know, improve themselves, uh, improve those around them, you know, spread positivity, like you're saying, you know, it's, um, I've gotten a lot of messages in the last few days, just, you know, uh, people saying thank you for, you know, sharing a positive message. And, you know, I don't, I don't look at it that way. I just look at, you know, this is, this is a time when I think we all need to do everything that we can to be there for each other, to connect people. You know, this is, this is a time where, you know, who you are connected to really matters, you know, 
And uh, I, I want to say good morning to the people that we're connected to on here. What's happening, Derek, Roland, Dina, Jeff, Chris, Dayton, Carla, Patricia, my girl, Bob, Trisha, Jacob, Robert, what's happening, guys? Good morning, and thank you for jumping on here and sharing. If you guys have any questions for us, please drop them in the comments, and uh, we, we're happy to answer them. It doesn't matter if it's business, life, uh, marriage. Judd, I, I hear you have a podcast coming. <laughs> yeah, we do. Trying to squeeze that one in. We, we, we should promote We should promote the podcast <clears throat> right now. I have a feeling that this podcast is going to be, it's, it's going to be a, an interesting one and it's going to catch fire fast, man. And what, what better time to launch it than right now? Yeah. So Mindy and I were speaking about it last night. It was pretty funny. We, we actually had a little bit of a, a fun debate back and forth, but uh it's called D Island Life. So the letter D Island Life. And it's basically, you know, I moved down here 17 years ago and I've been building companies down here. And of course, met Mindy six years ago, uh, almost seven years ago when she was a corp she was a corporate flight attendant flying families around on private jets. Uh, we'll just say she was the boss of the plane, so to speak. Um, but, uh, yeah, she flew into Anguilla and we met at Blanchard's Beach Shack and, and, uh, there's been quite a few adventures. Let's just say there's been no blanks. There's been, uh, there's been a lot of journeying, a lot of fun, a lot of traveling all over the world. And, and we've, we've got, uh, we've got a pretty cool, pretty cool life, man. And you know, what's the, the most incredible thing about that is, is that it wouldn't have happened this this dream that, that we're in this 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 reality it's not dream but dream life this reality that we've created is is based upon the decisions that we make made to create it and you know we work our tails off um but you know originally when when mindy and i first ran into each other it was up to us to ask or not ask and we asked and here we are creating the D Island life podcast coming soon to a internet server near you. <laughs> I, I, want, I do want to dig into that. Cause I think that, you know, a lot of the people, some people on here are from our industry, but some people aren't. So I want you to talk about when you, you started your business back in Montreal and uh, you know, how, how that started. Cause I think it's, it's such a good story. And especially, I think it's a great story for people to hear specifically right now when there is like everybody's focused on what's going on everybody is missing the opportunity that is in front of them and so i want to talk about that opportunity when you took the jump as they say uh, what did that look like what were you afraid of what were you thinking and then you know give us the cliff notes version of what it has led to Okay, so we're going, this is, you know, I'm 40 years old now, so we're going back, uh, we're going back 23 years ago. Wow, <laughs> 23 years, man, holy cow, time flies. You better make the most out of it, otherwise uh, you're gonna wish you did. So 23 years ago, I, I uh, moved, out of, moved out of our family home and I figured that I could go out and, you know, thrive as a 17 year old, you know, go and go and get our own apartment and so on and so forth. Well, you know, we started realizing that, of course, it's not that easy. <laughs> you can't go very far on 180 bucks a week. Um, so, you know, we had the apartment and uh, this is my um, my girlfriend at the time. And and we uh, we didn't have a whole lot of money, that's for sure. So we struggled and struggled. And then finally, I ended up getting a job with my through my sister my stepsister Catherine Moxness and started working at the Gary, Gary Taylor Thibodeau with um with uh, less fortunate people disabled people that uh, that needed attention and help so I was working at a at a home a private home that had uh, had people that needed attention there and so from there I ended up uh, going or getting a position at Sunnydale Elementary School as an integration aide, working with autistic children and integrating them into the primary uh, primary school system, which was really, really rewarding. It gave me, gave me a tremendous amount of perspective of how fortunate 
we truly are just the gift of being able to raise your hand, just the gift of being able to speak, just the gift of being able to see and hear and smell and touch. And I mean, all our senses, I mean, that's such an incredibly powerful thing. And, and at that time, at a young age, it, it allowed me to realize the gift of, of what we, what we have and the gift of giving too. Right. And so, which is so powerful. The gift of giving is, is one that is extremely rewarding and um, for everyone, right? It's not selfish. I mean, the gift of giving is, is a selfish giving um, um, gift because you're looking for the reward of feeling incredible, but you're doing it authentic. If you're doing it, you know, truly authentically with no, with no, um, no need for return or no, you know, you're not looking for some kind of a return when you give, then, then that is truly a great gift. So from there ended up uh, hitting the late June months and primary schools were of course out for summer. And I wasn't the type of dude to sit back and collect unemployment insurance. I wanted to get to work and, and get out there and make more money than what that was going to, going to pay me. I, I I'm, Typically one, Brian, you know me, I, comfortable to me is something that's not really uh, in my, my vocabulary, comfortable. Um, I like to have a base comfort level, but I, I always am, am, am breaking out of that shell, looking for new opportunities and new opportunities to truly grow uh, myself and everybody around me. And so, so I ended up finding an ad in, in the local newspaper called, it was the Montreal Gazette. It said, it said, uh, Come and sell door to door for grizzly super sealant and make you know x amount of dollars a week or up to whatever and uh, went and met the gentleman elan ended up going to do a door-to-door -door sales position for an asphalt maintenance company started learning the learning how to protect pavement assets and enhance their aesthetic values in other words making driveways look pretty and protecting it from the sun back then you thought you were just slapping some black gold black paint <laughs> Yeah. Now, now you use these fancy <laughs> terms, but back then you were just making it black. <laughs> yeah. Li li literally like, you know, truck in the neighborhood, knock on Mr. Wilson's door. Hey, Mr. Wilson, we've got a truck in the neighborhood. Love the opportunity to be able to cut the grass back on both edges of the driveway, seal all your cracks to prevent water from getting in and eroding the foundation, causing puddles and depressions. And then we're going to spray it with a protective coating, like a sunscreen, you know, and best of all, it's, it's black. You're not going to waste a Sunday getting the black sealer all over your feet and your hands and your driveway is going to look fantastic. You pay after the job's done. Mr. Wilson, we're going to go and get started now. How does that sound? Okay. $150, $200, right? And so what happened was I ended up, I ended up really believing that I could do more than the sales position in a very short period of time. And I went to the owner of the company a few months later and asked him to take me on as a partner in the business. And he thought I was crazy. I was 18, 18 years old at this time. And, and Christina, my ex, uh, she was pregnant with, uh, with our son, Justin, who is now 20 years old. Uh, for a lot of you watching, you do know Justin, but um, I was 18 years old. Christina was pregnant. And, uh, and I'm, I'm wanting to break out and do something more than this door to door sales position. And so he didn't take me on as a partner at Grizzly Super Sealant. So I actually walked that day, I left, and I had some cash in my pocket and walked to uh, or drove to Canadian Tire, living in Montreal, Quebec, Canada at the time. And I walked in and I looked for the best quality five gallon pails of black night sealer asphalt driveway sealer. And I bought a bucket of sealer and put it. Did I lose you? Or are you still there? You're good. You're good. Just, okay. just chop for a second. So I, I got a five gallon pail of asphalt sealer, put it in the back of my car with a paint roller. And I took the action of pushing my foot down on the gas pedal after I put it in gear. And I drove to a neighborhood in Dollar Desermo, where I knew there were some nice 600 square foot four car driveways that were really gray. And I knew I could create some really great looking driveways, but it would start with one. And so what I did was I walked up to the door, I took the action to walk up to the door. And I knocked on the door and I stepped back away from the door because you don't want to be in somebody's face, of course, and you don't want to you don't want to scare them. So you step back away from the door about 12 to 15 feet back towards the driveway. And 
gentleman answers the door and says, can I help you? I said, yeah. my name is Judd Burden and I'm starting my very first company today. And the name of my company is Imperial Asphalt Maintenance. And I would love the opportunity to be able to paint your driveway black, save you a Sunday from having to do it, fill your cracks. I'd love the opportunity to do this. You'd be the very first driveway that I do with my very first business. And he says, absolutely, Judd, I'll absolutely love to help you out. And I get the driveway done. And I said to the gentleman, I said, you know, this is just an incredible opportunity. Can I use your driveway as a demo so that when I go to knock on all the other driveways, all the neighbors, I can show them your driveway as the showcase? He says, Judd, I'd love that. I said, do you know anybody who might be interested in having this done on the street? Oh, yeah, Judd, I know all the neighbors. We have community barbecues all the time. I've got all their contacts. I'll give them a call right now and let them know you're here to do this. And I did like six driveways on that street that day and made like $700 in that one day. But it started with the action. Started with Actually, it started with the thought and then putting that thought into action and then trying it. If I didn't walk up to that door that day and I didn't actually start to communicate and ask for things, we can talk about that probably in a little bit. I know you did a recent interview. But if I didn't do that, right, thought, action, result, reaction, right? And so I don't believe that I would be sitting here right now having this conversation. Actually, I know I wouldn't be. Uh-oh, we might have lost him. We'll see if he comes back. Uh, you know, it's interesting, guys. I, I love hearing that story uh, because that story allows me to to reflect on my own journey and hopefully it allows you to reflect on yours. Hopefully you look at the decisions that you make and the things that you are you know, capable of doing yourself when you have a thought and you want to put that thought to good use. When you um, think about something that you want to do and you know, when I, I get the opportunity to see, you know, the life that Judd has built, um, there he is. He's back. I get to see the life that Judd has built, the companies that Judd has built, and the impact that that single decision made. And so I would challenge you guys to think about this, and then I'll let you finish your story. Those decisions that you make today, those things that you either ask for, you don't ask for, you take action on or you don't. They impact hundreds, thousands, or hundreds of thousands of lives because over the last 20 years, Judd, how many people would you say that you have interacted with or impacted within the asphalt maintenance industry? And then and then take it a step further and the ripple effect and the ripple effect and the ripple effect of those people. You know, I've been around you at the National Pavement Expo, and I'm going to brag on your behalf for a little bit here. Um, you know, the, the stories that come out of that singular decision that Judd made to go knock on that door, be sincere, be authentic, and ask that guy for his business, the, the ripple effect of that after the fact has saved people's homes, has given people a life that they would never have dreamed of having with successful asphalt maintenance businesses that started with watching a video of Judd talking about how you could do what he just described. And if he wouldn't have done that, those lives wouldn't have been changed. So, you know, for me to you, everybody knows that we're, that, that we're best friends and all that stuff, but you know, it's, it, it, those kinds of actions matter in this world. It matters that people have opportunity. It matters that we get on here every morning and we try to help people as much as we can. It matters that we take the time to ask for things, to talk to people, to connect, to, to especially right now where people need it the most, man. It's like, you know, these things that people, sometimes we just, I like to say that people live life like fish food, man. They just float on the surface. That's all they do. They just float on the surface. And so for all of you watching, I want you to understand what it takes. That, that action 
it's a great story because it led to success, but it wouldn't have mattered if the mattered if the first guy said yes or no. He would have told the same exact statement to as many people as it took to get somebody to say yes. And so it's the same in every business. It's going to be the same when this thaws out in business. Those people who are taking action today, who are focused on changing themselves, changing the people around them and changing the world are the ones that are going to win. You know, it's it's interesting. So, you know, I'll, I'll wrap through the rest of the story, but then I want to talk about a business that I'm currently reinventing right now because I think it's important for everybody to to understand how you can literally think, process, and uh, adjust the GPS coordinates to yield a different result. <clears throat> so, you know, I did I did the driveways seal coating with five gallon pails earn money, reinvested, bought trucks, bought flatbeds, created spray systems, crack repair machines, and became more efficient, became more productive, and we were maximizing our business more and more, bringing on staff. That was from the age of 18. I sold my company when I was 23, 23 years old, moved to the Caribbean. Dad was banking down in the Caribbean, said it was the most beautiful place on planet Earth came down here with Justin, who was two years old at the time, and um, Christina, and then and then we were down here for two months checking it out, fell in love with it, ended up moving down here. Um, and it's 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 been an adventure built, you know, several companies while while I've been down here, uh, both on island and abroad, um, employing a lot of people here. Uh, we have a water sports company, we have you know car rental business, we've got a digital marketing agency. Um, and, and that's really that th those, those opportunities came about because I overcame the fear of rejection. And, you know, when you're, when you're asking for things, when you're positioning the ask without an intention to get something for free, like I do not want to ask you for something that is just some kind of a a give that you're giving and feeling bad about the give. So if I ask you, Brian, hey, Brian, you know what? I'm running short on cash. Can you get me some points so I can travel to this destination for some airline stuff? That there's no there's no push pull there. There's no there's no you do not feel good giving those points because of the positioning of my ask. But if I said, hey, Brian, you know, I'm dealing with a situation where I'm I'm really trying to do some self improvement and I'm going to a seminar and here's what the seminar looks like and what I'd love the opportunity to do is be able to attend this thing for to to grow my future and to help my family and those around me and I'd love to be able to repay this back to you down the road once I've gone through this and I'll send you some videos and photos while I'm at this thing and I'll share my Coles notes with you as well as to what I've learned and I'll give you back those points at a later point in time because I'm confident that taking these actions are going to help me grow my future. It's very different than saying I'm going to Las Vegas to go to a bachelor party, right? Like it's just a little bit different. Be smart in 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 your moves as you're moving your your positions through life. Ask for things that are truly that that people are truly or companies are truly wanting to give because they feel that there's actually actually a a uh, a positive outcome of that so to speak for both sides it has to be everything in life has to be equal in a sense right i think it's giving even when you're taking <clears throat> correct and you know ken walls was speaking about that the other day you know he shares and pushes out content of other people constantly that he feels is going to impact his audience positively and for those that don't do the same for him, he says that there's a, a push pull for so long before it's just kind of like, you know what, I'm not I'm not willing to give anymore on that side because the response and reaction isn't what isn't what it should be. It should yeah. be balanced. It's a one way street, right? I want to Correct. say good morning to some people. What's happening, Shane, Jared, Andrew? Man, we got a lot of people on here. Lonnie, what's happening, man? Chris Filipelli, good morning, brother. Roland. Leonard, what's up? What's Mike up? Andoy, Mookie, what's happening, guys? George, good morning, guys. Zach Collins is on here. Rich Sanders, Trudy, good morning. Bob, Bob Kapesky has a question. Only question in the whole stream. 
you guys got to have questions. I, you know, What's people up, are so shy in the world today, man. They don't want to ask any questions. They got a million, but they don't want to ask what we're talking about, right? So Bob's question was, if you have small chunks of time right now, would you listen to a book or a podcast or a YouTube? What would you do? We have enough time right now to do all of the above. What I would do is I'd probably speak. I'd probably, I'd probably, uh, first of all, the very first thing on the list is find three mentors. How do you find a mentor? <laughs> How do you find a mentor, right? Ask. A mentor is somebody that you look, look up to, somebody who's got the history and track record of being somebody that you could see yourself wanting to be. And, you know, not to say that you want to be envious of an individual, but it's good to set benchmarks of where you want to go in your life. And if they're living a life that you feel is something that you could see yourself living, that's a, that's a pretty cool mentor. I'd find three mentors and then I'd probably ask them, what books that they are reading, the top three books that each of them are reading. And you're going to find that probably all three of your mentors that are actually those people are going to probably have one or two of the same books for some magical reason. Um, and then I would, then I would probably, uh, I'd probably watch some right now. I'd probably watch some like family, good old family Disney movies or something like that with your children. If you have children and just sit down and slow down for a little bit to, to actually just share that love play some board games. But from a self-development perspective, yeah, mentors to me, like mentors with a notepad. That's what I call it. Like have a mentor and have your notepad or have the ability to record the conversation because you want to listen to that conversation probably two or three times to reflect on it. I know I do when I speak to with my mentors. It's it's not just a conversation that turns to mush mush in the ears and you only absorb 20% of it. You got to reflect on it. So I think that's probably my advice right now. Um, Brian? I, I would add, um, you know, to the mentor thing, the first thing that came to my mind when you were talking about that is, is the same exchange of value that you were talking about, right? It has nothing to do, you know, when you have a mentor, uh, I have never had a mentor. I've joined coaching programs, but I've never had a mentor in my life that ever cost any money right? It's somebody that's willing to do, uh, to guide you, to invest their time into you. And I would tell you that um, you have to be careful with people's time that you are, you know, that you are exchanging value with them in a sensible way. And, and I'll give you this example. You know, when people are helping other people out, which we do a lot of, so I'm just giving you guys some advice from things that we, we experience here, is that you know, make sure that when you're asking those questions or you're you're getting some time with this person, that you've got things organized, that you've got your thoughts organized, and that um, you know these things are being asked in sensible ways. That that the use of both of your time is exceptional, right? Um, and so, when it comes to having a mentor, I think there's a lot of a lot of that that has to do with your having a strategy of it, not just you know, assuming that somebody will always be there to answer your questions. Does that make sense? Without, without being too, you know, I, I want, I always want people to ask me questions, right? I always want to be there for people and be able to answer everyone's questions, but just make sure that you're doing it in a sensible fashion where it's not, you know, the bite sized questions is what I call them. Like those things get overwhelming for people who are mentors to people because there's so many of them coming at one time, right? So if you, you know, maybe list all your questions for a few days or for a week and then ask them, you know, hey, could I get 15 minutes of your time to just run through a bunch of stuff with you? Absolutely, they'll do that for you. It's when they come, you know, when you think of something and you just send off a question, that's the, the those are the challenging times for mentors to actually be able to mentor people. So I wanna get that out there. To answer the question, the core question, um, I would agree with Judd that you should be able to do all of them. There are a lot of podcasts out there that are short bite-sized pieces um, that if you're going, for example, if you're in your car, you're going to the grocery store. I have specific podcasts that I listen to on the way there, or I find YouTube videos and I add them to a list that I know when I'm coming across videos, I look at the length of that video that looks interesting to me and I add it to a list that's short you know, maybe a half an hour, 15 minutes, or maybe there's there's five minute groups that I have 
that I consume that content when I do. Um, and, and I would tell you that right now, the more that you can read, the better. And I'm not talking about audio books. I'm talking about right behind you right there. There's a whole cabinet full of them. And there's another, you know, paperback, paperback downstairs, you know, just, Somebody just posted on here, Janice, thank you for that comment. Be still. Be still. Because, you know, this time gives you, this title of this show is Perspective. And this time will provide it to you to the level at which you decide to receive it. And that requires you to be still, you to be quiet, you to take your phone and plug it in at your desk and walk away and go watch movies or television uh, with your children and, you know, create memories right now, guys. This is a time in your life that you will never forget. Don't waste it watching the news 24-7. You know, I, I tell people this. I have to watch the news because there's a lot of things business related that I have to get information on, right? I either have to go on the internet or watch the news, but bite-sized pieces, not a marathon of a few hours watching the same repetitive negativity. So, uh, Bob, that's a long answer to your question, but I hope it helps. I, I would do all of the above. Um, remember this, YouTube is always the most impactful because it's visual, it's audible, right? It's audio, it's all of the above. You, you know, those videos, you're going to be able to feel that transfer of emotion. So it's my favorite. It's just not the one that I get the most time to do. Uh, audio books you can do a lot of, right? Because you're always in motion and you always have the ability to plug into those. And uh, reading is probably uh, as difficult, if not more difficult than YouTube, right? You got to set time aside for that. So that's my two cents. You know, as, as you're going through this, being, being be still, like hearing, hearing, just be still. <clears throat> for those of you that celebrate Christmas, let's just you know, with, with compassion for all the sick, for all the people, families who are dealing with challenges right now and and for those spirits that have moved on, <clears throat> compassion is important. The other thing that's important is to know that we're all having an extended Christmas morning. Where is everybody on Christmas morning? Inside. Where? In the family room. With their family? The yeah, with their family. Everybody, you know, being from Canada, I said earlier, you know, it's cold outside right now. It's cold outside. If you're going to go out in freezing cold and you don't have your protective gear on, you're going to freeze. If you're going to go to the supermarket, go as little number of times that you need to go. If you're going to go and be in environments with other people, protect yourself. And when you're inside from the cold, spend time with the family and doing self-development things. Turn on some music. Get dressed up and stand in front of the mirror and look how good you look. Feel good about yourself. And the other day, I dressed up with a colorful shirt and a pair of pants that I bought that I would never wear at home. Usually, I'm walking around in pajamas, but I did it and I brushed my hair and I shaved and I looked in the mirror and I'm like, man, it's good to be alive. <laughs> and you need to do the same thing, right? Like you, you got to remember we, we are creatures that need to need to feel power. We need to feel good. We want to feel love. We want to feel wanted. We don't want to feel alone all the time. And so, you know, there's, there's all kinds of solutions to that. I wanted to touch on, <clears throat> on reinvention a little bit or reinventing. I, I know uh, you're short on time here. So you just let me know. <clears throat> I've already delayed our sales meeting. I'm yeah. it's all good, man. We should want to, want to, want to share as much as we can. So <clears throat> we have an office called pink Mako. We built this company uh, two years ago and pink Mako <clears throat> originally started out as a social media management company uh, doing social media on island here for villas and for hotels and so on and so forth. And the business model was really built built around social media. Now, we also did web development uh, services and so on for local businesses. The thing is that it was the business is dependent or was dependent on the local market. 
So if a hurricane hit or if this situation hit, our office literally is it's lights out, lights out because the island depends on tourism, right? So clients here that aren't aren't in business are not going to or, or are on pause. They're not wanting to have the output of cash at this time. Therefore, they shut off the lights, right? And it's it's something really important. So we still have accounts for social media and stuff that we're doing, but the reality of it is to get new business right now here is impossible because it depends on tourism. As a hotel here, you can understand that it depends on tourism, right? It depends on people to come in here, depends on people coming to stay at the island with their families and they rent the hotel room and they stay here. So what we did was we said, heck, we're in the digital marketing world. Let's expand, expand globally. And this reinvention took place literally four days ago. It was either that we put our staff on leave at our office or we reinvent the marketing strategy to go out global, offer social media management services, offer a digital presence package where we're gonna do like the profile pictures, the cover photos, do the photo editing to make sure everybody's social media is set up properly for a few hundred dollars. And then to have website development going. So if somebody wants a website built or they're wanting to have it redone or recreated, then we're doing that as well. And then we also have the ability to do all video editing in-house. So. What are we doing? We've identified two different things. One is that during these times, everybody's online. Well, everybody, a lot of people are online. Pro I'd probably say two to three times the amount of traffic. I haven't looked at that those stats yet, but it's gotta be just wild, the explosive traffic trends right now. So people are online. And what are people doing online? They're searching for information related to what they typed in as a search box and they're scrolling feeds. Do you think there are people out there that want to have digital marketing pres uh, digital marketing presence for their for their own brand and for their businesses yes do you think that we can provide value associated with really really good quality photos images and content absolutely we can we have a team of people that do that do you think that people need websites right now that are optimized search engine optimized to generate traffic for themselves and or their business Absolutely. Do people think that video is important today? Yeah, you're watching it right now. Video is very important today. Video is actually what allowed us to grow Asphalt Kingdom to where it is today because the video content that we put out is the, is the stuff that everybody talks about. So video is very important. So we have an in-house video editing team that will do the video editing. Those video edits can be personal oh, brand. What's that? Who just popped into the studio. Who's in? Ricky? No, Mr. Kevin Gray. Kevin Gray, what is happening? <laughs> we're going to bring him on real quick, man. Sorry to interrupt your story. You're good. So I'll just, I'll yeah, just, uh, what? We're what live. Going on? We got the sky. So I'll just wrap up on that one until we see his beautiful face because I know he's got, uh, yes, there it is. There he is. Can you hear us? So I'll carry, I'll carry on here for a little bit. So, so basically we've re reinvented the business, right? We've reinvented the business because we know there's tremendous demand and everybody's trying to reinvent themselves and go digital as well. Therefore, our office is going to provide these services outside of just Anguilla, but global now so that we're not relying just on the tourism, the tourism uh, artery or channel for our company. And so Think about things relating to your, your life right now, your business life, or maybe you need to just, it doesn't need to be a complete uh, 180, but it does need to be an adjustment of the coordinates, right? And so in our case, I can tell you that our Pink Mako office will thrive because we are confident that we are wor world-class when it comes to social media management, uh, digital marketing presence, website development, video editing, we truly believe that we can we can provide value and solve people's pro problems that way and do it in a price range that is absolutely affordable for people. 
So without promoting Pink Mako too much here, the, the, thing, the thing is this, I wanted to use that as an example because literally when this first happened, I made a call, Brian, and you know how hard that was for me with my team who probably will watch this video. And I said, we're going to uh, keep you on for another two weeks and then we've got to, we've got to do some layoffs at the office. And I did not feel right about that. I did not feel good about that. I needed to invent, create. Um, I needed to expand my mind and take action just like I did when I sat down with Grizzly Super Sealant and asked to be brought on as a partner. I needed to go to the Canadian Tire to get the five-gallon pail and the paint roller. And I needed to go to that door, not just any door, that door. And I need to knock on that door and ask. And I needed to go for that and because of that, I'm here now, 22 years later, sitting here in Anguilla, in a beautiful villa with beautiful St. Martin views. What's up, Kevin Gray? What is up? What's going <laughs> on, brother? Welcome to the party this morning, man. This, yeah, man. this is an unexpected uh, treat here for everybody this morning. <laughs> Look at this. We got boys. Where's your Harley Davidson? That, yeah, right. I, I just want to tell the story of how Kevin ended up with that that handlebar that that killer handlebar, bro. That's yeah. like that's <laughs> like that's like almost borderline a front Woo! moment right there, man. That's like unbelievable. That's 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 things of legend right there. Well, thank you, thank you for the compliment. I see you guys. I see you guys working. You're working back there. Show us what's going on back there. You guys getting to work? Yeah. Or what's happening? Yeah, yeah. We're uh, loading the paver up with fuel now. You got a big driveway yeah. to do today, right? Yeah, we got about a 90 ton driveway we got going on. I saw it right <laughs> uh, beyond, beyond this concrete here. Yeah, we're out getting it. We are out getting it. Yeah, man. Moving America forward. <laughs> We are, man. We're we're practicing, you know, safe habits, social distancing. We're keeping all our tools disinfected, sanitized. You know, we're being smart out here, but yeah, we're we're keeping the meat, the, the needle pushing, guys. We got we got people out on the road too, man. We the uh, you know yeah. everywhere everywhere that we can service customers, we're servicing customers. Same thing. We're you know being responsible, doing the things we need to do, but we gotta we gotta keep it moving, right? People are dependent on us, and you know everybody. We're, we're staying within uh, what's legal, of course, but uh, at yeah. the same time, we're going to go continue servicing customers as much as we can while, you know, not uh, not stopping if we don't have to stop, you know. And uh, sure. so applause to you guys. Kevin, to give you guys an idea for those of you, I don't know how if you don't know Kevin Gray, shame on you. But if you don't, by chance, uh, he is ADC paving out of Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, the three of us uh, have, have been thick as thieves for a number of years here, and you know we 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 like to wreak a little havoc together from time to time uh, down in the island in Louisville at the National Payment Expo or online. You can see us at all of those places, uh, always hanging together and and trying to share our journeys and inspire other people as much as we can. So, thanks for jumping on, brother. Yeah, man. Kev Kevin, just. Yeah. Just quickly, brother, what would be your number one piece of advice to everybody watching right now, man? What's your number one? I know I love asking these open-ended crazy questions, but what's your number one piece of advice right now, brother? Before you answer, I want you to channel the Kevin Gray that was on the video that you sent me, the last one that you sent me, about your perspective on this whole situation. Yeah. And don't hold back. Don't hold back. I, you know, I, for me, for me, for everybody that's listening, uh, for our teams, you know, we're talking about it. I mean, I think it's just channel the positivity in any fashion you absolutely can. And, and by any means necessary, whatever that may look like for you personally, professionally, you know, mind, body, spirit, whatever that is, what that, whatever's important to you is just keep that momentum going forward, guys. Uh, keep, keep the positive energy flowing, keep the momentum going. Um, to, to me, you're either, you know, if you're standing still, you're going backwards. Um, in these times, especially, you know, it's, it's so important to, uh, to just find, find what makes you positive, what makes you feel good in these times, block out the negativity, uh, get, surround yourself with some people that help you keep them pushing forward. Cause, cause like I said, you know, if, 
in my opinion, if you're not going forward in these times, you're going backwards. And uh, when this is all said and done and this is all over, hopefully that's sooner rather than later, um, you know, this thing is going to bust loose. And I, I think we're all going to be busier than we've ever been before. Uh, there's going to be so much pent up demand and energy uh, and inspiration when this thing busts loose that, that we need to be ready. And so if you're being stagnant in these times, if you're going backwards in these times, uh, you're going to be behind the eight ball. So perfect opportunity to move the needle uh, professionally, personally, you know, whatever. Some, somebody just brought up in the comments here, Kev. I don't know if you can see it, but uh, she said, uh, Brian, you speak about routines and how important they are. Thank you Absolutely. for that. I'm keeping my morning routines. I want you to, you know, kind of answer that uh, from your perspective. I know you're in the middle of 75 hard right now. Yep. What has that done for you from a routine standpoint? And how do you feel, you know, how, how much more effective and dialed in do you feel now that you're on that routine and you kind of have that rhythm in your life? Yeah, it's huge, man. I'm on day 51. And, you know, I even I still have hard days now. I mean, yes, and it's it's been a challenge, you know, especially now with the gyms closed. I, I was I banked on that once a day to get one one part of my two workout requirement every single day was at the gym. So you got to adapt. You got to do something different. I mean, just just because times are changing and things are changing and things look different and things may be more difficult to accomplish now. That's not, I mean, to me, that's just an excuse. I mean, it's a perfect time in our world to make every excuse in the world. You got, you got every, and it's just one thing, right? You said it the other day, you've got one big giant distraction right now. And it's the perfect scapegoat for your inner bitch voice to come out and tell you to stop, tell you to take it easy, tell you that it's okay to coast. You need to get around some people right now. that are telling you to get off your ass and do something, yeah. you know, uh, keep moving forward. So this is the discipline and the routine right now is huge because without that, it's easy to lay around, watch Netflix, listen to the news, plug into the garbage. And that's all bullshit. That's all stuff you know, that's moving you in the wrong direction. And if you don't have those people, boy, I don't know if you guys watch and notice this or not, but there's a four, there's a fourth slot here that can be filled if you need, you know, you need a little ass kicking, I would join this group because you're going to get it from these gentlemen yeah. right here and myself uh, if you need it. And listen, to this. listen, listen, me. listen to this, everybody. Listen, listen carefully to this. Right. This came from Eleanor Roosevelt. Right. I posted this on my wall this morning. You have to accept whatever comes. And the only important thing is that you meet it with courage and the best you have to give. If you're not giving it the best you have to give right now, you know exactly that you're sitting there right now wishing that you could just do it. So what I'm going to advise you all to do is just do it. Get up, go give it the best you have to give right now because it sucks standing in front of the mirror and looking at yourself knowing that you didn't. It sucks. So sir, create an amazing circle, plug into people, get an ass whooping from time to time, look in that mirror and be proud and flex your biceps in that mirror and just give it like go look at look at Kevin right now. Yeah, you look you look like you're about to be stopped, don't you? Yeah, yeah. you're you're, you're going to get somebody's going to stop you right <clears throat> now. Right now. Nothing's no, stopping you. Nope. Now, my, my, old, my old wrestling coach, I, I talk about him a lot because he really helped shape me into the man I am today, I believe. And he used to say one of his favorite uh, little sayings was, you got to be the Nike man. You got to be the Nike man. And everybody, we were like, what, what's that mean, coach? Just do it. That's the Nike man, right? Just do it. You know? that, that's the truth, man. It's, it's funny how, you know, those, those motivational things that people share, right? And everybody says, oh, these things are so cliche. They're this, they're that. I can tell you without a doubt that those things are part of the rhythm of my life, part of the thing that keeps me yeah. moving forward, part of, you know, the things that I write down a quote of the day every single day. I want to share with you guys the one that I wrote down yesterday, because as I always say, when you go back through my planner, you can always tell what kind of mood I was in, what, what I needed that day, whatever, based on that quote. And the quote is this, 
Discipline is your best friend. It will take care of you like nothing else can. Jocko Willink. So those of you who have not practiced discipline or have not implemented it into your life right now, you are paying the price for not having it, for not having people that will hold you accountable, for not having people that will tell you that you should not be stopping right now because people need you now more than ever, right? That is what real friends do. That's what real business partners do. That's what real leaders do for their people. People need you right now, and it is a time when, like Kevin said, way too many people. They had to throttle back Netflix in Europe and the United States because of the bandwidth draw on the Internet. They were afraid it was going to take the Internet down. <laughs> what does that tell you about society? I'm dead serious. So what does that tell you about society? That tells you that we have a bunch of people who are sitting here waiting for somebody to come rescue them. And I got news for you guys. It will not be the government. It will not be the president. It will not be the people you work for. It will not. It will be you that rescues you. That's it. Outside of Netflix is not going to help you. Unless you're watching a documentary, which there's not that many to break the damn internet. What are you and doing? Just, just balance, balance your stuff too. Like, listen, if you want a little entertainment or whatever it is, if that's what you want in your life, don't overdo it. It's called balance, right? Just, just be smart, physical activity, balance. You don't need to go work out for 12 hours a day. You can go work out for an hour a day, 45 minutes, 30 minutes, 15 minutes, do something physical, do something physical, do something for your mind, grow your mind, spend a little time there. And then maybe spend a little time expressing some gratitude to people, right? Like, mm -hmm. Ryan, you've been recently writing cards to doctors and nurses, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, listen, express gratitude. If you've got a problem that, has, that, that you've created from the past, go and make an amends, right? Work on it. Don't just apologize. Show action that you're willing to make an amends to heal what it is that you've created, you know? And that's the that's the incredible thing. Hey guys, listen, I gotta tune out. I have an eight thirty call with a big shipping company. I'm trying to deal with shipments all over North America right now. But uh, I can tell you one thing for sure. I'm gonna take the action to pick up the phone and make some create some solutions here for all of our customers. Why? Because we're action driven. Everybody, action driven. Love you guys. Uh, have a great day, you, guys. Brother. Appreciate you, you guys brother. coming on, and we will see you again tomorrow morning right here, same place, same time, on Morning Perspective. Brother, it was a pleasure to have you on. Man, here. good to join in. Good to Bye. see you, brother. I will talk to you guys. Love you guys. Let's get, get it. On. Let's get it.